This is Barry Belosis, one of the musculoskeletal radiology fellows at Stanford University. 17-year-old male with left dorsal lateral wrist pain after a collision injury and fall on outstretched hand. Concern for perilunate dislocation. The patient in this case presented with this wrist radiograph. In here, we can see that there is volar dislocation of the lunate with loss of alignment to the radius and also the capitate. Here in our frontal view, we can see that we lost the second arc, which we will talk about, and also a suspicious fracture at the waist of the scaphoid right here. The normal arcs that we talk about in the wrists are the glula tricorpal arcs. So the first arc outlines the proximal convexities of the scaphoid from here all the way to the lunate and then to the trichretrium. The second arc outlines the distal concave surfaces of the same bone. So from here and all the way to the trichretrium. The third arc, on the other hand, outlines the main proximal curvatures of the capitite, which is here and also the hamate, which is right here. We use this arc to evaluate for any incongruency that could suggest this location. One thing that we talk about is the perilunate versus the lunate dislocation. Both are in the same spectrum of ligamentous injury. Here on our perilunate dislocation, we can see we lost the arc and also have like this piece of pi sign. Additionally, on our lateral radiograph, we can see that the lunate is in alignment with the radius. However, the distal carpal row, such as our capitate, is dorsally dislocated. This is consistent with perilunate dislocation. On the other hand, here on a different patient, we can see that again we lost the normal proximal carpal arcs here, right here, and then we have the piece of pi sign again. However, we see that the lunate lost its alignment with the radius, whereas the capitate remains in alignment. So this is a lunate dislocation where the lunate volarly subluxed because of a ligamentous injury. Additionally, we can see this fractures associated with this dislocation involving the radius and the trichretrum. CT without contrast can be used to evaluate for occult fractures associated with this dislocation. For example, in this patient, we do see the fracture here in the trichretrum and the distal radius, which we can also here see on CT. However, in some cases, fractures may be occult on radiograph, and if there is concern, then CT without contrast should be pursued.